Hi everyone, this is Toluca, aka Markers and Minions. This is my second Facebook Live video for you, and I decided that I would kind of go back and forth between doing plan with me videos and these little more like informal Q&A type videos for you. Um, just to kind of switch it up a little bit and put the focus on you guys and see what you need help with. So I have a list of things that I wanted to talk about in my live video so that I wasn't constantly posting on our uh, group page and gunking it up. Um, in the meantime, think of any questions that you might have for me and then hold them um, for, um, for the end. And um, let's see, pending members. Okay, right now I have 80 to 100 pending members, people who have requested to be in the group or who were added by you guys, um, but they didn't answer those screening questions. And I know it sounds silly, but I have those screening questions um, and I've actually had to deny some people because it'll say, oh, what grade do you teach? And they'll write, I'm not a teacher. And it's like, oh, why are you trying to be in this group? So, or, or are you using benchmark? No. Okay. So uh, that's why I have those questions and I don't want just anyone to come into the group. But I was thinking that I would go ahead and approve the people who were, who it shows were added by you, by someone else in this group. And then um, if you would all just do me a favor, uh, help me moderate because it's growing quite a bit now. So if you see people complaining without, um, you know, a question at the end of it, if they're just complaining, here to complain, and they're not trying to resolve their issue, let me know. I think there's a way that you can actually, like, uh, report it to me so that I can go and, like, see it and then choose to delete it or not. Um, and then the other thing is if it starts to get like a little bit too spammy. Um, I've seen that on other groups and I just don't want that to happen here. So help me out. Um, speaking of members, I'm doing a giveaway. So because we reached a thousand members, which we're, we're over a thousand hundred now, which is crazy. Um, I'm hosting a giveaway, so I'll announce three winners next Sunday. Uh, and so all you have to do is comment on that thread that I started with something that you'd like from my store for free and why it would benefit your kids or why you, you'd love it. I can post the link to that thread after the video is over. Um, okay, so Unit 2, plan with me. So for next week, I'm going to start diving into Unit 2, and it's going to be a big one. We're going to use the template, and um, I've revised it now, so there's an option, uh, there's a separate template for K1, and then the original one that we were using last week, which is better for 2 through 6. Um, hi, Vicki. So... Go ahead and re-download it. If you go to My Purchases under TPT and then you go and find the free download and you click re-download, you'll get the updated file that has the K1 template. Um, the big difference in Kinder and First is that there are, or Kinder at least for sure, there's, there are mentor reads. And um, the shared reads in the beginning of each week are basically for your phonics and your language in context. So it's kind of like uh, our equivalent to the word study page that we have. And then your mentor reads are what you're doing your close read tasks on. That's the way that I understood it. The other thing I noticed about Kinder is, and maybe first, I can't remember now, um, but for sure Kinder is you don't have just one writing prompt for the whole entire week. You have different writing uh, skills or tasks each day and so I imagine they're just like writing a sentence or something and that you'll see that that incorporates whatever their language skill for the week is. So I think I was looking at like week one or week two for unit one and the skill was verbs or nouns or something basic like that and they had to incorporate that into whatever they were writing about. So that's the big difference with that template so go ahead and re-download that if you need it. Um, for I also uploaded the unit two picture file cards for vocabulary. So it's kinder through fifth grade. I don't have any sixth grade. I'm really sorry. Um, those are really great for doing picture sorts, especially when we get to those nonfiction 
units later in the year, like the weather unit and the animal unit. Those are really fun to kind of have the kids sort the pictures by, you know, habitat or whatever. Um, and the other way that I love to use it that you've seen on through my in my pictures is uh, doing observation charts. So the way that I introduce the unit is I print out these pictures, I blow them, I put them on this big kind of poster, I laminate them and I put them around the room and then the kids go around with a vis-a-vis -vis marker with a partner and they have to go and write something that they observe or they notice or they predict or they, what is the other one? I notice, I predict, I wonder, yeah, I wonder. So that's a fun way to preview the unit. So make sure you have those printed out if you are going to be using those and we'll prep them in our video next week. We will also prep something called a pictorial in input chart, which is a Project GLAD strategy. It's, uh, anyone can use it though, it's really fun. It's this, you basically tear off a big piece of butcher paper and you have a picture in the middle and then you teach the concept writing on the outside and you're actually like writing on the board as you're talking to the kids and you're filling it out and it's very visual. Um, and it connects the picture to the words. And so we'll be creating a pictorial input chart next week, and it can be modified for any grade level, and it will be used to introduce Unit 2, which is all about characters and the challenges that they face. What else for Unit 2? I think that's it. So materials, you'll need your template next week, your observation charts if you want to do that, and then a big piece of butch paper so we can start drawing. Um, okay, so I'm going to say that for the end, this thing, don't look yet, that's a big thing I'm excited about. Um, feel free to share photos of things that are working in your class, uh, anchor charts or, or like what I did, student work. Let's see what it actually looks like after we talk about it in our video, let's see what it, how that translates into the classroom. Um, Resource updates. So I've been busy this week. My daughter was super sick, so I only went to work like one and a half days this week. And whenever she napped, I was going crazy on my keyboard getting these resources updated. I added first grade and fourth grade spelling and grammar pamphlets as fast as I can. I'm working on fifth grade. And then um, I don't have plans to do sixth grade. I don't know how much how much you focus on spelling and grammar in sixth grade, but if there's a, a need, a desire, I can get started on those too. I also created something for small groups, which we'll also be planning next week for unit two. It's a Google Slides, interactive Google Slides activity presentation, I guess, and it's for your technology center. Um, it works well for, okay, I'll do sixth grade. <laughs> um, it works well for kids that have Google Classroom, teachers that use Google Classroom. So that's on my TPT store as well. It's all these different literacy, reading activities, writing, typing, spelling. It has a little bit of word work in it, um, and it's really cute. It's like on a Google Slides, and they go on, and they actually just type onto the Google Slides, and you can just assign it, and then it makes copies for everybody, so it's paperless. Um, that's what's new with my my shop. Okay, let me look at a couple of these questions before I tell you my big news. Where can I look for phonics for my non-readers in second grade? There are decodables, Annie, that I can show you how to access. I will do sixth, okay. Thank you, Tina. That's awesome. Okay, so something that I've been working on is I was on the adoption committee, as most of you know, for my district a couple of years ago, and I worked closely with our benchmark consultant, and then the year that I implemented, so the following year, I kept in touch with him, and I totally, I emailed him all the time. I was like, this is what I'm working on, and I sent him hard copies of things that my students had made, including like the inquiry-based projects, and I got in touch with him uh, last week and I asked him to, I asked if he would be willing to come on here and do a live video with me. And I told him, you're all really nice, so not to worry. 
and we just want to ask questions from the consultant, see what he has to say about it all. So he agreed to come on, and he's also going to be bringing um, another person who did, who does, I guess she leads all the PDs in Southern California. So we'll have some two really good guests on here. I'm working on setting up a date. And in the meantime, I will create kind of a Google Docs, but on Facebook we have the option to create a file that we can all get on and manipulate and type. So I'll create different files for each of the grade levels and you can go on there and start typing your questions for him. And so that way he can preview it before um, and, and know kind of what, what direction we're headed. Um, yeah, thank you. I really hope it works out. He's really nice and informative. So, so that's what I've been working on. Um, some of you wanted to talk about close reading mini lessons. So what are your questions for that? I can go on and on about close reading mini lessons, but I want to know exactly what I should focus on for you. I did a poll and I think there were about 50 people that wanted to hear about that. This last week, my sub, not me because I wasn't there, got to do my inferencing mini lesson, the one with the Alice Paul's floating head in the middle and they put character traits around her and had to prove it by finding evidence in the text. Uh, she did that one and then she also did a cause and effect review. <laughs> do you know you're funny? Uh, so being in year two, as I wait for questions, being in year two, I'm noticing that these mini lessons are truly mini. Last year, year one, and I had a combo class last year, so it was kind of all over the place. It was all experimental. But um, last year, my mini lessons were like whole group, 45-minute lessons. Poor kids. And to, now that they've had Benchmark for a year, they're, they truly are mini. I can get up there and teach for 15 minutes and then say, all right, we're going to break off. We're going to work, complete this with your partner, or you're going to complete this individually or like eventually in your small groups. So it's a lot easier. Ashley, I teach third grade. How long does it take for them to be proficient at annotating? I'm trying to remember, like my kids this year, they, they annotate like bosses already. It's really cool. Last year, I think I introduced it in our first 15 days and probably took a couple of weeks. I don't remember it being a struggle. Where do you store all of your student writing? Spiral, three ring notebook. They have a, a little, Robin, you're LAUSD. You know the little LAUSD yellow notebooks? They It's kind of just like a black spine and it's just, little they they write in that I have, our district has that equivalent so I don't go out and buy anything for that how do you determine what your close reading mini lessons are about I noticed that in week two you didn't do compare and contrast mini lesson but you did summarizing instead so look look at your what you've already taught look where you need to go look at your standards um, look at what's going to be spiraling a lot what they're going to be focusing on a lot so um, I for example, I chose inferencing last week because there's not that much inferencing. Um, and there's more key details and main idea than there is key details and summarizing. So you didn't do compare. And actually, I did have, now that I'm remembering, I did have my sub do the compare contrast mini lesson that I had planned. It was like an interactive Venn diagram, and they had to compare and contrast. I believe it was like MLK and Cesar Chavez. And it, I had her draw a Venn diagram on the whiteboard, and then the kids had to work together with a partner. Sorry, my nose itches. And they had to find evidence in the text or lines to lift or whatever, detail from the text, and they had to, to come and put the post-it note up onto the, the whiteboard. So it was like an interactive Venn diagram. Yes, I know those books, but when you run off the charts that they need to fill in, where do you put those papers? Oh, just in a folder. They, I get those, I run those off at the beginning of a unit, and then I have the, our print center make little booklets. So it'll be their unit one week, 
unit one, week one booklet, week two booklet, week three booklet, and it has like some spelling practice or um, graphic organizers, all that stuff. And then they just keep that like on their clipboard or in their folder. Hope that helps. It's not really like loose pa papers. In the past, before Benchmark, we would read a core lit book as a class. Is there room for this in Benchmark, or would that be too much for the kids? Would the only time for core lit book be during daily read aloud? I know that there is the daily read aloud meant to be in your ELA block. I don't do my read aloud then. I read Wonder to the kids, and I do that after lunch. I definitely tie that in like that. Something else can go. I have to make time for Wonder or other Correlate books. This is my first year, and I also have a combo. One or two things you suggest are key to get them through their own text. I know there's a combo planner, but I feel it's important they have time to annotate and understand their own grade level text. So like, what did I do to get them through their own text? While I was teaching, you know, my third graders, my second graders were on the other side of the room with their text. So they would they would kind of preview whatever text we were about to be reading and they would annotate. It wasn't the best system. Sometimes they read it before I read it to them, but at least they were, um, you know, being exposed to it and kind of practicing. I had them work with partners mostly. And then in second grade, you teach, I don't know what combo you have, but with my second graders, they also had the little shared reads, the really short passages, and so those were good also to have them doing independently. And then when they are whole group with me, I do my system of three reads. So the first read is the teacher read aloud, the second read is the student read with their pencil and they annotate, and then the third read, which is the next day, is their close read. And so we're reading the same text over and over. Thank you, Stacy. Reading folder. I just, Kristen, I just have a folder that they, it's like a catch-all. We have cubbies. They don't have desks. So in their cubbies, they have this uh, folder that the district gave us, and then that's their cursive packet and the, any of their booklets. Or if we are working on a really long, drawn-out writing assignment, I'll have them put their loose pages in there, too. I teach something called the big cheese for writing every morning. As soon as the kids come in, they, they grab their blue spiral. I bought blue spiral notebooks at Staples in the beginning of the year for like 11 cents or something. And they come to the carpet with that. And that's where we do our big cheese practice writing. And so occasionally I'll have them work out of that, but that's mostly just for big cheese. Some teachers say that benchmark is aligned with daily five. It's, it is daily five in disguise. It's the exact same thing. Do you use Daily 5, and if so, how do you organize everything? Um, I didn't use Daily 5 in the past. I've tried to do small groups. I feel like now that I have benchmarked, my small groups can be a lot more organized. I'm going to be starting those with the next unit. So I didn't start that with Unit 1. Um, but I'm going to be having um, a word work station, just like Daily 5, a technology station because I have two desktop computers and then we also have a um, like a laptop cart that I'm gonna just roll to my classroom every day and use. Um, we're gonna do a read to self unit. I mean station, sorry, so that's very daily five. I'm not gonna do read with a partner because I can't handle that while I'm with a small group. And we're gonna do a work on writing. And then the teacher group, that's six groups. I don't think I had that many when I was initially planning this. I don't know. We'll go more into it next week. I have, I'm have. i making a template for you guys that you can download for free. It's, for, it's to help us get our small group started. So we'll talk about more about that. But, yeah, Benchmark is the exact same thing as Daily Five. They just have different names for the stations. Oh, okay, Shirley, now that I've done the first unit and I'm looking at second, wouldn't it be easier to start the year with fiction and not government? Okay, so a lot of teachers in our district did do that this year. They started the year with fiction. I like to start with, with unit one government because it goes with our class rules, you know, our, um, our contracts, our class promises that we make, and... Um, I also love to do that inquiry-based project where they're reaching out and helping the community in the beginning of the year. 
Um, I think it's a good unit to start with, but I know that some people have swapped it. And in our district, we can do that because our first trimester assessment is covering units one through three, and it doesn't matter in what order that we're teaching that. And then our second trimester, what is it, four through seven? Yeah, something like that, and we're not there yet. So I guess that's up to you. So Paola, fourth and fifth, you probably won't be having them. Well, so that'll be easier for them to read their own text. While you're with one grade and they're, they're, with, uh, they're on the other side of the room or however your room's configured, that'll be a lot easier for them to get through that. And then once you start your small groups, you might even consider blending the kiddos in some ways. Do you do daily fluency with your class? No, no. I don't do fluency. Oh, Kristen, your three, four combo. Good. Center examples. Okay, Robin, yeah, that reminds me. I talked to, I think I mentioned this in the last video too. I talked to a couple of TOSAs and they're going to come on out and help my class get started with the small groups. And I would, I'm going to try to film that so I can actually post a video on here and show you what the centers look like and what um, activities they're doing. Because Benchmark has so much that you can pull from, from the online component. Because I know not every district purchased <clears throat> um, the physical workbooks for each kid. I know we didn't. So there's so much online that you can pull from. Gail. Okay, what unit are you starting tomorrow? I'm on unit one and I'm starting week three tomorrow. I have to do some damage control since I was out all last week, so I have to see where they're at, what I need to reteach. But I'm not going to redo the week two stories. I'm going to go ahead to week three and hopefully I can just move on with my, my lessons. Government for rules, right? Yes. Yeah, in the beginning, every unit one for every grade level has to do with um, rules and the very basic, the primary grades, and then it uh, kind of um, blossoms into uh, participating in your government and why people participate and having a say in things. And I really love that because I sit my kids down the first day and they come up with the rules for the classroom. They decide how we want our little government and our community to run. Robin, the inquiry project that I'm going to be doing for Unit 2 are my trading cards, the historical figures trading cards, and I will create something for that. So it'll be on my shop if you want to. It's all in Benchmark already, but if you want, like, the extra stuff that, I, that I'm going to be using for my own class, I'll be sure to upload that, templates and whatnot. <clears throat> Amanda, my TPT store has spelling and grammar for fifth grade. Um, yeah, it will in a, in a probably later tonight or tomorrow. I've already started it. I'm done with unit one, weeks one, through two, and three, and I'm on unit two for spelling and grammar. Those things take me forever, and they're small on my screen, so I'm like this all day. So thanks for your patience, guys. Small groups next week, but only one group a day throughout the week to test the waters. That's a really good idea, Vicki. And actually, I decided that for when I get small groups up and running, I'm only doing one rotation a day. So the kids are only going to one place because I just don't think I can handle like 15 minute. I have a 30 minute block and I don't think I can handle two 15 minute rotations. I think that's a bit much. So very similar to daily five. They just have to make sure that they go to their five stations throughout the course of the week and each one will be 30 minutes a day. That'll really give me time with my group that I'm working with the small readers with. Um, we can really go in depth and close read together. Do your students fill in all the parts of each graphic organizer or do you just make one anchor chart with the whole class? It depends, Nora. Sometimes I like to do an anchor chart. So for cause and effect, a couple weeks ago, I did just an anchor chart. Um, but when the kids kind of get, um, quicker at writing and following along and taking notes with me, then I'll have them do their graphic organizers. And what I usually did was I, for the mini lesson, I would do like the first couple boxes on the graphic organizer, and then they did the rest with a partner, or they could hypothetically do them in their small groups.
the gram yes i was talking about the grammar spelling book these this little guy this will be done for fifth grade very soon either tonight or tomorrow i don't know it's sunday so there's some good tv on tonight so i don't know how much i'll be doing tonight um but grades one two three and four are up there for units one two and three Yeah, so the inquiry project for unit two, I'm doing trading cards. So it, I got that from the second grade TE. The idea is that um, the theme of unit two is characters and challenges, facing challenges, overcoming challenges. I think that's pretty much across the board for everybody. And um, so what I like to do is have, I they, they choose um, a famous person throughout history. And then actually come to think of it, that kind of ties well with unit one, what we just talked about the last couple of weeks. Um, and then they have to make trading cards. And so I have them, I don't know about you, but at my school, Pokemon cards are like the number one reason why we're all pulling our hair out because they just smuggle those in like crazy. So tell them they're making basically Pokemon cards, but they're doing the Pokemon card on their his the historical buddy that they choose. We call them historical buddies. And they have to research them and type type up their profile, draw their little picture, and they have to decide like how they have to decide rules for when they actually battle like Pokemon. They come up with their own rules and um, what's it called? The, um, it look. I think it looks like HP on the Pokemon cards, but it has something to do with like their level, their power level. And so based on the challenge that they overcame, that justifies what their power level is, and then they battle each other. So like, I don't know, I remember last year Amelia Earhart like won every battle because she actually died in her challenge. So anyway, I'm rambling, sorry. Claudia, so if you go online and download the template off of my TPT store, it's free. That'll help you understand the components of the program and basically how the, your week and your unit is going to unfold. General comments about the program is it's awesome, but it's going to take some getting used to because it's definitely different. It's rigorous, but the kids can handle it. Yeah, we have to do academy time. Oh, okay, you sound, Tina, you sound like LAUSD with that dibble stuff. Um, so we, when I was with LAUSD, we did something called UAT, Universal Access Time. So that sounds a lot like your academy time. So we mix the kids across their grade level using their dibble scores. So we are doing RTI, that's what we call it. And we, um, this, this year, we pushed for a push in so our we actually have rti teachers so it's not just us we're we're fortunate and they're going to push in during our small groups time and then we decided across our grade level that we wanted them to focus on writing with the kids so each week we're going to have our rti push in come in and work with one group and that's going to be a homogenous group based on their writing abilities and they're going to really dig into that prompt that weekly prompt and go through all the steps with the RTI teacher and the kids that we pool for that RTI group for writing will not be attending the centers that week does that make sense that's all they're working on we have to do this for an hour a day not using benchmark what yeah I know okay that's crazy Benchmark started as a guided reading program, so before they even became a, a balanced literacy full-on ELA program, they had these excellent small readers, and their Lexile leveled and their guided reading level, Fountas Pinnell. So it's totally RTI friendly. 40 minutes a day to teach Benchmark. Should I still do groups? Maybe a couple a day? Maybe. If, you're, if your kids are getting that intervention already, then maybe you might want to just get used to the curriculum. You only have 40 minutes. I would, if it were me, I would probably just do all my mini lessons in that time and then maybe work in some of the groups in your academy time block. I don't know, secretly. Kristen, the trading cards for character traits unit two, is that in your TPT store? Not yet, but I'm going to be working on it. I say I, I have them choose a non-fictional person in history that overcame a challenge. 
Yeah, so Robin, we have a print center. So I have the kids each make their own trading card. They make it on an, uh, one of those large index cards, and I have this like template that I create, and they actually glue it onto the index card. And then I take that bundle, and I send it to our print center, and I say, okay, guys, shrink this down to the size of a Pokemon card, and then make me 24 sets. And they're awesome. So then my, each of my kids get a set of historical figures trading cards. But I, I totally acknowledge that probably no one else would be able to do that. It's just that our print center is really awesome. Stacy, the inquiry projects, based on how long they are, um, I normally just do the fourth week. So I teach three weeks of benchmark, and then before going to the next unit, I take a week off. And during that week, my ELA block is spent doing inquiry-based projects. So my room is just chaos with materials and supplies and and whatnot and it's really fun and um we also i also draw out their unit long test over the course of the fourth week because it's crazy long and i just assign like eight questions a day about and then um, they take it over that that week um, but for unit one i'm doing an improve the community project and the kids uh, they by the way update they decided that they wanted to help the homeless which is what I had in mind this whole time. So that unit one, my, my project that I have planned involves collaborating with our mayor and then um, the founder of this temporary aid center that we have. So since that involves other people and scheduling to a time to meet up with them, I brought in our inquiry project into the actual three weeks. So I started that a lot earlier. I, Tina, I have not taught ELD with Benchmark. I don't have the ELD cluster. I didn't last year, and I don't this year. I have our our principal, you know, what is that called? Tracks class? I don't know. That might be a bad word. We have the ELD cluster in one class, and then we have, like, the IEP cluster in one. I have the IEP cluster. <laughs> Tina. There, yeah, my district, I almost said it, my district has... They just hired a whole bunch of people this year. But then my friend tried to get in a little bit later and she wasn't hired. So I don't know, you might have to check back. So thank you, Gail. Um, do you have to get board approval for these projects? No. I never have. I've never gotten a board approval for these projects. I don't I don't see why I would have to. Um we go for, you know, the 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 unit one, we actually go to the temporary aid center and we donate the little survival kits that we've created and we do that outside of school time. So it's just kind of like a, hey, I'm going to be here, parents. If you want to bring your kid, come with me and the mayor to donate our survival kits, you can. And so last year was the first time we did that and we had, I had almost my whole class go. But since it was outside of school, I don't, and I wasn't like transporting any students or anything, so I don't think I would need board approval. <sighs> fundraising the kids earned money themselves I didn't solicit funds from anywhere else for that project it was all their idea I think I'm caught up with questions I'll have 72 comments I don't know if I covered everyone's sorry if I didn't mm. What else? What else? I hope that last week's video helped you all. Did you do any of the lessons we planned together? Oh, Robin, that's a really good idea. Collecting books for a school in Houston for Hurricane Harvey. Yeah, so anything that has to do with improving the community or improving your school or participating in some way shape or form is perfect with unit one. You don't have to see unit one as just government. You can see it as more broad, you know, collaborating with your community. That makes it a little more fun. So Jackie, um, there are three people on my grade level. One of them is my twin. We basically, we do a lot of team teaching where she brings her kids into my classroom and we teach together. We pretty much follow the same schedule, daily schedule. We plan together and we, we 
we have the same thing in our plan books, but she talks a lot, so she takes a really long time to do stuff. So uh, for the most part, we have the same daily schedule. And then our other colleague, she um, last year wanted to do the program with Fidelity, so she did every single lesson, and she got to unit four, I think, by the end of the year, so we weren't on the same page as her. Daily schedules for everyone. My block, Claudia, my, my ELA block is an hour and 20 minutes. That doesn't include the my writing. I teach explicit writing first thing in the morning. That's about 30 minutes. And then sometimes in the afternoons after we come back from lunch, that's when we weave in science, social studies, if we need to supplement. And um, we have all our specials. And so sometimes I'll carry what we were doing in ELA into that block. Do you teach every lesson for each week of the unit? No. Can you talk about your vocabulary instruction? Sure, I would be glad to. I'm so glad you brought this up, Nora. Okay, gone are the days where we have a set vocabulary list and we have the kids write down definitions and, you know, practice it in a sentence, turn to your partner. We're not doing that anymore. Oh, I see a mad face. Sorry if that upset you. Um, it's mostly in context now. So you're, each week you're going to have a vocabulary skill that you can focus on. You'll see context clues come up a lot. So you'll be teaching vocabulary or uh, how to attack a vocabulary word in context using clues. There's another vocabulary skill you can use to teach. It's called um, distinguish shades of meaning. So it's basically like synonyms and stronger versions of each word. Um, so that's the way that I teach vocabulary. I know they give you a set list of vocabulary for each week, but I don't really look at that because I have my students annotating the text and they're choosing what's what's new to them. Because that list that Benchmark gives us isn't particularly what they're having trouble with. So they kind of choose the words and then we talk about it um, the next day after they annotate and we use context clues and help each other out to figure out what each word means. Thanks, Gail. <laughs> so during the first read, my students are not annotating. During the first read, they're following along with their finger, not their pencil. I'm reading it to them. And then the second read, they're annotating. That's in one day in the span of like 10, 15 minutes. And then the next day, yeah, the second day is the third read, and that's where they're, we are doing our close read task. Yeah, Ashley, that's a shame. Have your admin join our group. <laughs> so I'm not sure which assessments you use to group your kids for reading groups. Oh, okay, Lexa levels. Our district wants us to do quick checks. So, Barb, we do something called SRI, so the Scholastic Reading something. It's a computer-based test, and that gives them a Lexile level. And so we're going to start our groups by, uh, with the Lexile levels next, next unit. And then eventually, once my groups are fluid and the, the kids uh, you know, have that down, I'm going to start doing the guided reading levels. And so our program comes with assessments um, online. You can print them off, and I think there's even a hard copy book. And it has quick reading, um, quick stories, and they have to answer a couple of questions, and they retell, I think, and, you know, it's timed, the typical reading, short reading quizzes, and then that will give them a guided reading level, so Fountas Pinnell A to Z. Um, I'm not sure what the quick checks are. It might be what I was talking about. Vicki, yeah, are you allowed to deviate from your district's pacing guide? Because three weeks, I mean, yeah, that's how long the unit takes, but it really, it's nice to be able to extend that fourth week and really reflect on it and go deeper into the concept with, with project-based learning. How do you use the lower level Lexile close reading booklets? 
Wanda, I'm not sure what you're talking about. The small readers, the lower level Lexile booklets. If that's what you're talking about, um, I'm, I'm grouping my kids just based on their Lexile level. And then um, if they're, by the way, if there's a reader that doesn't have your, your student's Lexile level and your grade level, you can access other readers online. So from other grade levels. So if your kids are really high, you can go pull a fourth grade reader. Um, assuming you don't, you can't just walk into the fourth grade classroom and borrow one of their physical copies, but you can, you can access grades above and grades below. <laughs> it wasn't you. It's funny. I wonder if people accidentally put a mad face. I hope I'm not offending anyone. I'm only here to help. <laughs> you, at the end of the day, you do you, right? You do what works for you. I'm just saying what worked for me last year and this year. Um, AR, you can do AR levels. Yeah, the, the small readers, I don't know if they have an AR level on there, though. Maybe, I know they have Luxal and then guided reading. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, quick checks. Okay, quick checks, yeah. Wanda, that's cool that you got a set. I would, if I got an extra set of lower Lexile close reading booklets, I would totally have that as a station for my lower group. Like if I'm not with my lower group, I would totally give that to them so they can access it. Uh, primary colleagues, I don't think they did the project-based uh, assessment week format that I did. I just kind of came up with that on my own. I'm not really sure if they did the inquiry-based projects. I think my primary teachers at my school were a little more reluctant to fully dive into Benchmark last year, but I know that this year they're feeling a lot more confident. And I actually set up with, for one of the members of this Facebook group, she lives not too far from me, she is going to come and observe a first grade teacher at my class. I hooked it up. So if any of you want to do something like that, let me know. Mm, did any of your primary call? Informal assessment book. Yeah, that has all the assessments that you'll need. Okay, I'm caught up. I still have 46 people on here though, so give me your questions. So next week for our small group plan with me, unit two, that's going to be a big, big video. And I'm working on like a poster board that you can actually print out and blow up so that you can laminate it and write in each station and which kids are going to be in each group. And... I'm trying to think of other activities that would be good that complement benchmark. So I'm going to use these for sure in the small groups for word work. And then I have my technology Google Slides thing, which took me like hours yesterday to figure out how to share a digital resource that's on Google Apps. Because, you know, when you make a Google Drive uh, document or slides, when you share it with someone, they can go on and they actually edit the original. So I was thinking, how am I going to share this with all my... Facebook people so that they're not editing the exact same one and I figured out that you can actually download it from my store And then once you download it you click on the link it forces you to make a copy So my original is not touched and then the other cool thing is whenever throughout the year as I'm adding more slides and more activities for my students yours will live update also Ooh, Okay Readers theater I didn't use those too much last year. Those were really fun. I used them a little bit around like unit four. Um, I know our during our RTI block last year they used them. I didn't have to teach RTI last year because I had the combo class, um, but you could definitely pull those in there. Those are those are leveled, and then each um, character or speaker in the readers theater is leveled. So you know you're you're super low student in that group. They don't have to be homogenous groups. 
um, you, you can pick out your real low readers and give them the characters who are leveled lower. So that's kind of neat about this reader's theater. You can really mix your groups up. Surely for the writing, I'm trying, this year I'm going to really try to do all of the weekly writing prompts because last year I didn't because I was thinking that I had to walk them through the writing process every week. And now I've realized I've had an aha moment this, this year that the analyze the prompt writing assignment that you get every week is more reading comprehension than it is writing. It's here's a prompt. Do you know how to analyze it? Read it, analyze it. What type of writing is this going to be? Um, you know, what source are you going to use? And so I am going to be walking them through that every single week, whether or not they actually get to the full on writing stage of it, who knows, but I will be doing my own writing assignments with every unit. I like to pull in like one big writing assignment. So for unit three, it's, we have, um, it's animals and habitats and interdependence. I like to have them do a big animal research report. And then unit four is multiple perspectives. So I do this whole, the three little pigs versus the true story of the three little pigs. And that's a big writing assignment. We, we do a classroom debate and all that too. I don't test for spelling, but I'm in third grade. So, but the, the weekly, um, the weekly tests do have, it doesn't test the spelling words in isolation, isolation. It has, it'll say, which of the following words has the same ah sound as in the word apple? And then it'll give you options and they have to match the spelling, the phonics skill. So that is one way that you can assess spelling patterns. Bye Robin. Stacy, last year I made it to unit nine by the end of the year. Before the S back, I made it to unit eight. But I didn't worry about covering all the units because my standards were being covered still within the other units. So I felt like I had taught what I needed to teach. Um, Barb, that's a good question. So the lessons in the TE for the close reads, I will glance at those to see how the TE wants me to teach them. And sometimes I do pull the examples, like whenever there's like a, um, evidence from the text, I sometimes use those examples. So I'll have the TE next to me, but most of the time I'm just, I know how to teach cause and effect. You know, it's easy for me to pull out the examples and guide my students. But Every once in a while, I'll glance at the TE and say, hmm, what answer did they want? Yes, Nina, the spelling and grammar is all from Benchmark. I don't make anything on my TPT store that is um, not in Benchmark because I don't believe that we need to supplement. So anything that I make is just to make it like more fun or engaging or a little more student friendly or a little more teacher friendly. Yes, so Kristen, the grammar lessons are mostly all review in week three. Week three is the uh, you do week, so mostly everything that week is going to be review. All right, people. Um, so I'm going to hop off this live video pretty soon, and afterwards um, I'm going to create the different um, live documents that we can all go on and add questions to. I'm going to group them by grade level. So I'll have a separate file for kindred teachers, a separate file for, you know, um, TOSAs or whoever's in this group. And then you find whichever file best fits you. Go click on, click on the file. And then I'm, I'm hoping to create like a table. So your name and your question um, for the benchmark consultant. And then if you, if you read through it, please read through all the questions before you ask one. And if you see your question already asked, maybe just do like a, like add your name. How about that? You add your name. So then once the benchmark consultant is ready to come on, we'll preview, we'll look at the questions and we'll say, oh, wow, there were like 10 people that wanted this question. So that'll help us filter through. Sound good? Thank you, Tina, she is all better. My daughter is all better after a trip to the urgent care. All right, you guys, thank you. Talk to you soon.